uh, as, as I said again, uh, testimonies are, are such a wonderful thing because people give us real life stories of what really happened in their life. And if you read through the New Testament, <clears throat> all of the, the, the letters that Paul wrote, these are testimonials. These are things that Paul writes to the church and he said, these things have happened to me and God has told me these things that I'm telling you. It's his testimony. It's, it's him explaining, you've you got to get on board. You've got to get these things because you're going to need them. Just like, just like when the angel appeared to Elijah and said, you need to eat because you're going to need this. Paul tells the church, you need to put on this armor because you're going to need this. It's the word of God that came from, from the Lord that came through Paul that said, teach him to put on the armor. Teach him to use all the things that God provides that we can withstand these cunning things to use our own, our own ideas against us. To lead, us in, to lead us away from the world. <clears throat> you know, I was, I was on this, I was, I was reading about get the difference in guilt and shame because that's what Satan uses. He uses that guilt. He uses something that we did in our past that, that we already asked God to forgive us for, and God has forgiven us for it, but Satan holds a little string on it. <coughs> and he, he tugs on that string and says, oh, you, you look what you did way back there. And he lets that guilt if we meditate on it and think about it long enough, now, now we became, become, become shame. We're ashamed of ourselves because of what, something that we did that God has already forgotten about and cast as far as east is from the west. But Satan just keeps reminding us. He keeps poking and prodding at us saying, well, you can't, you can't give a testimony because you this or he's, he's got a million ideas and a million reasons why you can't. But we did the whole sermon on what can't is. And can't is can not. I can, but I'm not going to. So Satan uses all. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Say that's one of the things that Satan uses. He uses that guilt to put us to put us in a place where we don't feel like we're we're, we're worthy or we're, that we're capable of. That's uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. Now, I've, I've explained many times how I've got a pretty wild imagination and how it gets out there. And as I was something that I discovered as I was reading through this and studying this, it says uh, 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 one, one guy had written a deal about imagination. And he says, an imagination is an image in your mind that is incorrect. <laughs> oh, I was like, that didn't be right between the eyes. An image that's in your mind that is incorrect. Now, who's going to use that? That's not an image that came from the Lord if it's incorrect. Something when I imagine something and I dream up something, it's something that Satan is taking me out on a little rabbit trail. And he's going to take me out there in the darkness. And he's going to get me out someplace where I don't need to be through my imagination. I was, I was thinking, wow, that's, I've, been, I've been walking down that road. That's, that's a, I've been saving lots of ammunition a lot of times. <laughs> you know, keeping, um, as I was studying that, guilt is, is seeing what we have done. And shame is seeing ourselves as a failure because of what we have done. And see, get, Satan uses the one and turns it into the other. He continues to poke and prod at you about something that you might have a little bit of guilt about until you feel like until you're not concentrating on the guilt anymore now we're concentrating on ourselves. and it's something that we've already asked God to forgive us and God has already forgiven us it's not even part of our life anymore but Satan can you if we don't have on the whole armor of God if we don't use the, 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 the instructions that we get out of the scriptures we can't fight that off we're just like that mechanic well I, I know I got all the information here I got the book but I keep finding it in the book because I don't spend enough time in the book. I don't spend enough time learning not even to know how to use all the armor that he provides for me. I know the Bible says to put on the whole armor of God. What is the armor of God? That should almost just be automatic to us. That we can we can just say, you know what, I know, I know what tool, I know what tool I need to get out of my toolbox in order to fix that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10 and 22. Let, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, 
having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us learn to separate ourselves out, to pull away and tell Satan, no. I know that you don't know what you're talking about. I know that, that you're going to lead me astray. I know you're going to take me out into a place that I don't want to be and I don't know how to, and I don't, I'm not going to know how to get out of there. So I've got to learn to, to, what Paul tells us about the renewing of your mind, by using your mind. Just using it. Using it in a way that he explains right here. Sprinkled, let's see, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with a pure heart. Let us draw near to the truth. Full assurance of faith. One more, Hebrews 9 and 14. Back up one page. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Do you truly believe in the blood of Jesus Christ? Do you truly believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has the power that it has? Is what Paul's saying right there. Read it one more time, 9 and 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Do you think it has the power? Do you really believe in it? Then let it work. Put on that armor and say, you know what, I'm going to go out today, I'm going to fight a battle. And the battle's going to come my way, but I'm going to come up in the morning, I'm going to get ready, I'm going to put on the armor of God, and I'm going to recognize and learn to recognize the things that Satan is going to throw at me that I can protect myself against the wiles of the devil. Some scripture calls it a fiery dart. It, it's, in, it's designed, it's intended to stick and to burn. But it, we know that a fiery dart's not going to pierce armor. But we got to have it on and we got to be ready. We got to know, we got to recognize, we got to see, and we got to know that He is the one that is, is providing all that we need to get through that time. As we, as we, as we go through the week and, I, and, and, and we think, you know what? Well, it, it's too late. I don't have time. I got to get up early tomorrow. I got, I got, I got to, you know, I, I just have to come in and thank the people in Wainwright, Alaska that are going to be watching this. You know what? I, I was just so amazed when we were there. Roddy was asking me earlier, what time are we going to start to, uh, tomorrow? I said, I don't know. We'll be here about four, and we'll start practicing whenever it, the Lord leads me the time to start practicing, and we'll stop when we get done. And in Wainwright, that was from six. We started practicing about six because service started at seven, and we'd be done about 11 at night. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was unbelievable. The more time we spent praising the Lord and hearing His Word, uh, one night there was three different sermons. Just as God delivered them. Um, who was the... Uh, no, I can't think of his name. The couple. Um, not... Oh, I can't think of his name. He come up, he preached Monday night. Um, well, Chad preached Monday night. But uh, who was the, the Tony? couple that came up? Tony. 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 Yeah, the second night he comes there, this, it might have been maybe it's Tuesday night, he comes to the service and he's got his Bible under his arm. <laughs> and we go through a good part of the service and pretty soon he just gets up and comes to the pulpit. <laughs> With boldness. Not intimidated, not afraid. And the night before he'd come up and ask for prayer. The night before he'd come up and ask to pray, Lord, or, 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 preacher, pray for me because I can't hardly walk because my knees hurt so bad. That was Monday night. Tuesday, he comes with his Bible under his arm. And about an hour or two hours into the program, he comes up and he comes up to the pulpit. Because I told him that the Lord needs you to do something. Everybody there, just do it. Just follow the Spirit of the Lord. He comes up, he gets a microphone, and he preaches for an hour. Wow. And he walks up and back and up and back. And I'm standing there thinking, this man was asking me to pray for his knees last night. <laughs> God will give you all that you need. He will provide all that you need to go. As people, um, the, the Bo's got back today, and, and he asked me, he said, well, how was your Alaska trip? I said, amazing doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what it was like. Because nothing was more important than the time we had to spend together in the Spirit of the Lord. And God blesses that, and God, God just enjoys that as much as we enjoy it. And the more we do it, the more... 
than what we want to do. But we got to start doing it. We got to start spending that time. Or we're going to come back. Our Saturday services are coming back. And, and I don't know where God is going to go with all of this, but he's providing already where it's going to be a, a community outreach type of service. We're going to come together in the mornings. We're going to have communion. We're going to do a little music. We're going to get all gathered up and get excited. And we're going to go do something for somebody. We're going to go out in the community and, and show people that we're just, we're just God's people. And this is what he gave us to do today. We're going to go do it. Maybe we're going to clean somebody's yard. Maybe we're going to paint. The, I, was, I was told this last week that the halls of the school need to be painted. We're just going to paint the halls of the school. It doesn't matter what or where. What it matters is God says, go do this. Let's get her done. Let's just go do it. Let's come together. Maybe we'll have breakfast. I don't know what we're going to do. But our Saturday services, they come back. It's going to be a, a community thing. It's not going to be we're not going to shut ourselves in our little church and close the doors. And No, we're going to just get out. We're going to just praise the Lord in every way that He gives us. And, he, and I'm sure because He's already provided for the first Saturday. And I'm sure He'll provide for every Saturday that comes. There's a, a world full of people out there that need to know who Jesus Christ is. And we just can't sit in here and wait for them to come in. We've got to get up and go out there and get them. He didn't say, go preach and I'll send them to you. He said, go you therefore and preach. And it's not about going out there and standing on the corner preaching. It's about going out and living the life that Jesus Christ lived on this earth so that people will see Jesus through what we do. Yeah. Amen. 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 So that's where God has led us. And uh, when we started talking about bringing the Saturday service back, um, that, that's kind of where he was saying it's going to be different. And I thought, well, it was different enough the first time. <laughs> I didn't know what different was going to be the second time. But again, we're excited about it. We're excited about what God's going to do through, through the efforts and the opportunities that he gives us to go out and, and just to minister to people where they are. And let them see that Jesus Christ is still walking the face of this. He has not left. He lives to the people that, that love him. But we got to put on that armor. We got to be able to walk out there with the boldness and the confidence that Paul did. Walk out there just as Paul walked into Rome. I came to do what Jesus Christ told me to do. That's what it is. Nothing, nothing less. Because if He is for me, who can be against me? Amen. Okay. One more scripture, and then I'm gonna close. John four twenty four. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Those are the word of the Son of God. Those are the word of Jesus Christ. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So wake your spirit up and get it ready. And say, okay, spirit, we got it. about 11 more services between now and next Sunday. <laughs> maybe, maybe God will we'll squeeze another one in there somewhere. And let God, let God have some time. Let God say, okay, I, I want to be as much as I can, but I want to be there. I want to go and see what God does. Because we're not, we don't have, we have an, we have a, an itinerary of what, we're, what the plan is for each night, but we don't know how that's going to go. People have songs they want to sing. People have testimonies they want to give. And we're just going to be here. We'll start just like we did when we were Wainwright. We'll start at, at, at whatever we start. And we'll finish whenever we finish. And I promise, I promise, I promise. Jesus, God loves you. He's going to bless every minute that we spend in this presence. He's not going to leave us here to worship Him all by ourselves. Where two or three are gathered, He's going to be here too. Amen. Amen. So come expecting the blessing. Come expecting to see how mighty, how mighty, how mighty God is. We're gonna we're gonna pray that 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 the Spirit of God just overwhelms everybody and overwhelms everything. We want to we're gonna pray that the Spirit of God just pushes the floor up through the ceiling. Something exciting, something real. We're gonna pray for it and we're gonna ask for it. And he said, if you ask and it's, if you ask and it's the will of the Father, guess what? It's going to be. He promises that. If you ask anything that is known of the Father, that I will do. So come prepared. 
We have some people that, that have done it that are going to be here that are going to need prayer. And as the Lord leads, we're going to we're going to have prayer time to pray for people. We're going to we're going to we're not going to just be confined to, to some kind of schedule that this is what happens next, and then no, we're just going to let God lead us through this. And He said, and I'm excited. My spirit's jumping out of me. Just it just can't wait. I'm so glad we're today. We got started. Because as we as it come together, when we started planning it, and we didn't really, there wasn't anything kind of, and, and as God began to put things together, the more we did, the more exciting it got, and it just gets more and more exciting every day. So come and expect, come and expect to see what Jesus Christ can really do. Come praying that He will. Come praying, seeking it. Says, Lord, we're coming to seek You. We want to draw nigh to You. And we're going to have it. We're going to have it. We're not going to be ready to quit. Just like last year, we're going to be ready to just keep on going. <clears throat> Amen. I love y'all. I love doing this. I love being part of, of what, what God does. And, and so come and join. Come and join. We're going to do a couple. Excuse me. We're going to do a couple of songs. One for sure. Maybe two. Maybe four or five. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Gary. While we're uh, while we're doing this, can I get you and Joe to help me out? You got you already got it. Got it. You're in good shape. Good man. Okay. <laughs> You want me to use my pocket or yours? Use <laughs> Bernie's. <laughs> I asked you if you had it. You said you had it. I got it under control. It's probably under my on my desk. Oh, it's right here. As I walk by, if you'll just put it right here, please. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> Ain't blame a guy for trying, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. We were at home, we were at Lowe's yesterday, negotiating plywood prices with Bernadette, a lady that works at Lowe's. And uh, so it was marked almost $20 a sheet. And so I told her, I said, we're going to need this many sheets. I said, there's any way we could get it for $17 a sheet. And we bought a lot of stuff there and it worked pretty well. She goes, yeah, I think we can do that. God, God bless my wife. She says, how about 16? <laughs> She goes, don't be pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> this had to show you. <laughs> oh, Father in heaven, we love you and we thank you so much, Lord, for all that you do in our lives. Father, we just cannot praise your name enough tonight. We cannot give you enough thanks. But Lord, as we as we worship with our tithes and our offerings, Lord, bless the gift, bless the giver, that every effort is made to just go out and to reach out and to touch people's lives and let them know that Jesus Christ is still walking the face of this earth and is alive and well. And we give you the praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.